Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Angel Bobs here for another thrilling episode to help you forget all your uh, coronavirus quarantine woes. <laughs> so what were we doing recently? In the last episode we built up this um, plasma turret uh, construction facility here. We built up some, uh, oh yes, the logistics bot system. We um, put in all of these lovely um, bot uh, house thingies all the way around here which give, 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 give me this nice coverage and use those to spread out all of these um, logistics requester, uh, no sorry, provider chests like like that one um, and that one and that one. So now so now all of my um, construction machines are emptying into those instead of just into normal chests which means I can request things um, through the logistics network and also means I can um, just get things to be built automatically by the construction bots so that should make things a lot easier. And that's a good thing because my next plan is um, quite a big one so I've got currently I've got my um, nice big iron refinery here that's churning out a, a, a decent amount of iron I'm not sure it's actually put producing enough yet how much is in these yeah it's about four thousand about ten ten thousand in them and how much do these hold yeah okay so there's um it's not really producing it fast enough I might need to put in another two of these these modules maybe I'll do that first um, Copper over here, how's copper doing? Copper is, is absolutely fine because there's much less demand on it, so I've got 200,000 stacked up here. That's fine. That's great. I can ignore that for for a while. Um, but then there's all of the more sort of the exotic, more exotic um, materials that I'm going to start needing. Things like um, aluminium and cobalt and, so, and all that sort of stuff. And that's a bit more complicated to make, so I've done a bit of research between episodes and I've um, had a look at this. this. This is essentially the way you make the more advanced um, minerals. And what we've got here, for each each ore you dig up out of the ground, uh, which is obviously sapphire, jeevalite, stereotype, crotinium, rubite and bobmonium. <laughs> Don't try and say that too, too many times quickly. For each of those, you first crush them and then you can sort them into the basic um, ores that, that, that you get from those. And that's what, I'm, that's what I was doing to start with. Um, it's what I was, what I'm doing up here with this with this rubite. I'm sorting it out to get the crushed rubite out, um, which I, oh yeah, which I can then sort into lead and nickel, for example, um, and then those you then process onwards as as required. Um, but you can also take these and you can do things like floating them. And I think I was doing that yeah with the jeevalite here. You can you can pass the crushed jeevalite through flotation cells to make jeevalite chunks and these crystal things as well. And when you sort those that then gets you some extra things out. So I've got aluminium and zinc coming out here as well as the standard iron and copper. So it's it, and then from there as well you can then do something else with the chunks to turn them into crystals and you can do something with the crystals to turn them into purified versions of that um, of that ore. And each step you do you get you unlock more and more um, more and more different types of ore therefore more and more different types of metals. Um, now, some of these are going to require slightly more advanced research than I've got at the moment, so we're, we're not going to go all the way down this chain immediately. But what I'm planning to do is build some sort of massive facility around here somewhere, probably in this gap here underneath the iron refinery, because I'm not sure where else to go with it. And there's, lot, there's quite a lot of space down here, if we're being honest. So if we start about, maybe about here, um, below, this, below this mine, because that, that'll give me room to put in a, um, four of these systems down here and then build something else up along here so what I'm planning to do is have a railway line come in here and then stations to drop off each of the different ores all uh, six of them and then feed those down into a series of crushers chunkers crystallizers and purifiers and then have all of the metal ores come off the side of there and head over here somewhere where we're going to have a system for for smelting them all and processing them and hopefully it won't be quite as big as these because I don't need quite as much of them of the of the more advanced ones I think <clears throat> so this is going to be quite a big job it's probably going to take me about a million episodes to get it done but I think it should be quite nicely future-proofed then and it should allow me to just eventually build up to having all of the uh, different resources I could possibly need right that's quite daunting um, Oh, the other thing I haven't mentioned about that is, is they're trying to keep it all balanced because there's going to be a few things like um, iron and copper which are going to be produced in larger quantities, which I need in larger quantities. Those, I'm not, those two in particular I'm not so worried about because they're being produced by these systems. 
and they are the ones I expect to need the most of. But then all the rest of it, if I want to, for example, if I want to produce tungsten, then I, ca I can't produce it without also producing iron, copper, aluminium, zinc and silver. Um, or alternatively lead, nickel, aluminium, gold and titanium. But the point is, if I've got um, nowhere to store the lead, then I can't get all the or the um, or the silver. Then I can't can't get the tungsten because the uh, the system will back up and and, ch and choke. So what I'm going to need to do is have some sort of storage system and then check on how much is in each of those storage systems in order to decide which of the preceding processing systems to turn on. So that's going to be quite complicated. Um, we'll have to sort of wait and see how that goes. I think. So, good. Let's start off with the easy part of this, and that's putting in the extra iron smelting systems. In fact, maybe I shouldn't be doing this with my um, construction vehicle. I could try this as a sort of a, a run with the um, with the bots and see how far see how far the construction bots get just straight out of the um, the normal construction network. I'll drive the vehicle over here anyway, just for when it all goes wrong and I realise I need something else to do it, do all the, do the hard work for me. But let's go and have a look at this. So I'm going to need another one feeding off this top. Oh, actually, it's probably not worth it because the limiting factor is not these systems. It's the um, doohickey, the stuff down here, the the uh, catalyst being produced from down here. So okay, let's let's forget about that for now. Let's start plotting and planning the rest of this um, rather complicated system. I'm going to want trains to come over out this way. I can get rid of that miner because it's not doing anything. So I'll have a rail coming across. Yeah, about... No, I'll hit those. I don't need those pylons, so it can come across there. So as to make sure I have the right amount of space, I'm going to put this in, but not necessarily build it. Conveniently, that seems to line up perfectly, so there's there's plenty of space there for this. Excellent. Now, do I have any other... Where do I have other drop-off stations? These are all going into chests, and I think... Oh, I know where I've got... Yeah, here we go. These ones will do nicely, especially if it's the same ore that I need to start with. I'm not sure how much space to leave for these. So I've worked out that for every crusher at the top, I'm going to then need six chunkers, six crystal yeah, six crystallizers and three purifiers. But I can put them in vertically, can't I? So I don't need to leave an enormous amount of space. This is probably reasonable. Copy both of those, then I can use that to keep the spacing equally right. And by right I mean the same. It would have been a lot more sensible to um, finish doing the railway bit here a bit more or at least do a bit more of the railway here before I copied and pasted them, because then I wouldn't have to do all of these manually, but never mind. Right, that's the first stage. I've got a system for dropping off all of the ores sketched out. That's a good start. The next step will be to bring the um, the belts down and start thinking about how to um, how to deal with the actual ores now that they come out when they as they come out the bottom. Let's get rid of some of these trees as well. Can't plan properly with those there. Right, and in order to get this a bit more automated, I'm going to build my. Um, worker robot system out this way a bit. In fact, let's copy that to there. And I'll need a pylon in the middle. Right, let's see how that goes. I suspect very, very slowly, given how slow my Mark 1 bots are. However, it's it's stopped, I guess. Um, it'll gradually get built up. Just need to Oh yeah, we need to wait for the bots to fly all the way up here to get pylons. <laughs> and then all the way back down again. So the, yeah, that is going to take a while. Okay, I'm going to head I'm going to head down with the construction vehicle and get some of this done because otherwise it's going to take forever. Now, one thing I don't have being built automatically at the moment is warehouses. 
that's going to be something I'm going to need to head up and get started on at some point, I think. And probably these railway stations as well, actually. Okay, while that's chugging away at that, in fact, let's move it around to the other side so it can reach a bit more stuff. I shall come down here and do this slightly more complicated bit by hand. It's only slightly more complicated. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely a, a leave it going while I go off and teach the um, bus to make the other things I'm going to need. Like warehouses, top of the list, and um, and LTN stations, of course. I sort of feel I should be doing that up here, and I'm not really sure why. Probably because they're fairly simple. Oh, LTN stations should probably be done up here, because this is where all the rest of the train stuff happens. What goes into one of those, anyway? Oh, they're not called stations, they're called train stops, because American. Right, this requires red and green wire, which I'm building further down. Okay, I take it all back. LTN stations require lots of electronics fanciness, so I'm going to build them down with the red circuit area, because that's where I've got all my coloured cables and other electronics-y gubbinses. Oh, for... <laughs> okay, so these are those cables. I'm also going to need copper wire which comes out of there. Oh, this is going to be interesting. And train, train stops. Okay. I don't have iron anywhere around here. <laughs> this is this is horrific. Who'd, what kind of sadist designed this mod pack? Uh, almost tempted to smelt it from this. Especially as I've got, well, carbon up here, which I think is flammable. Right. Um, oh, here we see the, um, the wonder of logistics bots. I've used up some stuff, so they're bringing back replacements for it. Excellent. except they're all short of battery power. <laughs> so I need normal train stops, which is iron, yellow circuits, more iron and steel, which could be done down here. Yeah, I think that might be more realistic. Forget that and that. <laughs> what I'll do, this is an odd thing to put on the bus, but because I need it further down, I'm going to do this. Oh, this is the area I was going to save for making more um, electric motors, wasn't it? Electric engines. Okay, let's extend this down a bit further then. Yay, going all spaghetti. Because that's what happens when you try and squeeze more stuff in after the fact. Uh, okay, so over here we are making train stops, which require iron sticks. Right, that's everything for the first step, which is train stops. These ones require a lamp, the two cables here, Okay, what goes into a lamp? Copper cable. <laughs> and we don't have copper anywhere down here. We do have it up here. Alright, let's bring that down. I mean, I could just pull it off the bus again, but since it's here, kind of, this feels easier and more faithful to the um, Factorio god of spaghetti. Um, no. Oh, it's just basic circuit boards, not basic electronics boards. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I didn't realise anything still used those. I've got them here, though. No, I haven't. I've got them here. Okay, just the constant combinators now. Getting there. Basic electronics boards. Okay, that's alright then. That's just... Another one down here, taken from these two. And then some hideous, hideous spaghetti to get it up there. <laughs> that feels kind of dirty, but I think it'll work. And then I can do that, and do I have any requests? Yes, yes, I pass the provider chests. Yes, there we go. I don't want a huge number of them. Right, good. That's stations, what was the other thing? Oh yes, warehouses. How do I build a warehouse? Stone bricks, iron and steel. It's got to be somewhere easy to do that, because those are very basic ingredients. There's a lot of them, but they're basic ingredients. Stone bricks, iron and steel, they're all around here in this sort of vehicle area. Or on this thing going out here. Let's try something. Actually, no, let's just, let's just head up there and do it manually. Um, it's probably going to be easier in the long run and better for my sanity. I did not look both ways before crossing that railway line. <laughs> That's a dangerous move. Oh. 
No, I don't have any of those left. I'm just going to have to do it this way. Right, there we go. That's just going to churn out warehouses forever, but that box isn't going to... I don't know, I'll, I'll build one because otherwise I'm just going to run out of... Um, I'm going to forget about setting it up. Oh, it's already set up quite well. Let's do that. Warehouses are so expensive, I don't want to build too many of them. Especially as I don't really have a supply of stone anymore for the stone bricks. Now, this is going to be a problem at some point. Not yet, by the looks of it. There's a huge quantity of it. Oh, I've got a warehouse with 13,000 in it. Okay, that's why there's plenty of it at the moment. But back in the dim and distant past, I had a system where all the all the um, crushed stone from all of my smelting was being passed up here and turned into stone, and then those that stone was being turned into stone bricks. That's not happening anymore, so, um, because I have found better uses for all of my crushed stone, specifically the um, uh, catalyst down wherever it is. So I've moved on from... I'm, I'm not, not using it for that anymore. Um, or rather, I've, no, ugh. I've diverted it all to be used as catalyst, and therefore none of it's being turned into stone bricks anymore. So eventually I'm going to run out. That will be quite some way off, I suspect, but if, yeah, it's, it's not going to last forever. Oh my god, these bots are so slow. <laughs> That's the problem with this sort of leapfrogging out with the um, the bot houses. You have to wait until one has been placed before the, and, and has power before the next one can be placed and given power. And since the power pylons are coming from so far away, it's going to take a long time. However, there was something else I wanted to have on the um, on the bus, um, or at least have on the logistics network, I remember now, and that was repair packs, because there's all these things getting damaged because I can't drive. So I might as well have the bots repairing those as well. Repair packs too are better, but they do require more exotic ingredients. That said, the exoticness of those ingredients is very, very low. They're very, very simple exotic ingredients, so I'm not too bothered. What's this making? Nothing anymore. Okay, you are to build repair packs. Actually, let's bu let's build repair pack two, which means you have to build steel gears. There we go. Now we'll have the bots flitting here from miles around. Okay, those have got other plans. Um, we will see bots coming over here, grabbing the repair packs and going off and fixing all the stuff I drive into, including and probably my car as well when I drive into things. So. That'll be nice. How's everything else doing? Ah, oh, that one's been turned on now by this because the pylons have been put there. There's a gap there that I'm going to have to go down and fix manually. I'll do that in a moment. It's just gradually walking the <laughs> the logistics, the um, the bot network out a bit further and further. That's going to take a while. Down here. There we go. Found it eventually. Now, actually, I'm going. Hmm. I'm going to put a br deliberate break in the track here, so that and probably here as well. So that when these stations get put in, they don't immediately start requesting stuff off the um, LTN network. Because the last thing I want is for all of these stations to fill up with stereotype. That would be bad, TM. Because I'd just end up with uh, loads of stuff that I wouldn't really be able to use properly. Uh, and loads of stuff in the wrong, sorry, being fed down to the wrong systems. And it'd be a pain to sort it all out again. Okay, let's start here for no apparent reason, except that it's a bit more exposed than the other ones. <clears throat> now, I don't really expect to ever need two of these, so I'm going to put in a splitter like that to merge them, and then just only do one, because I'm never going to need two belts worth of this for the, the, way I'm, the way I'm planning to build it anyway. It's not going to use that much, have that much s throughput. Okay, so this is the ore coming in. And then we need crushers, which is these things. I'm only going to put one in, because that's going to require six of the next step and so on. Okay, so we have a crusher, which will crush what... Which one are we on here? This is the... Okay, the fourth one is crotinium. All right, let's set it up for crotinium then. Have I left room for another station over here? Yes, I have. Thank you. Oh, yes, or, or on the other side. Okay, because I'm going to be producing crushed stone from here as well, so... And I could pipe it straight up to here, but I think I'd rather have another train dealing with it. Okay, so this is going to produce crushed stone as a byproduct. So we need to fling that out over there. In fact, no better idea. Bring it up here. Right, so that now will it means 
if I have if I copy and paste this across to all of the other systems then I'll have the same I'll be able to use one belt to take all the crushed stone out so that should work quite nicely as long as I don't get too much of it and I don't expect these systems to be running that flat out I mean that might be famous last words we shall see but okay so this is going to have the crushed crotinium so now we have a choice we can either float it into chunks or we can sort it into iron and copper so let's see do I have some floaters yes it's a joke there I have one floater okay oh and I need purified water for this step as well forgot about that I'll have to have a facility for producing that somewhere okay that's not too much of a problem I can deal with that the, the hardest step is going to be the acids for the next stage yes I need various acids for the converting in fact it's one square off being long enough let's try that again there we go chloric wastewater I wonder what you do with chloric wastewater probably turn it into an acid of some sort okay we'll worry about that later <laughs> yes there's a lot of this oh we'll worry about that later going on and actually if we put this like that oh so much redesigning actually let's just do that manually there we go right that's one um Okay, so that's my um, flotation stage. That, so this system here will produce the chunks and the um, and some sort of weird crystally things and some horrible waste water that's probably going to get turned into acid sooner or later. What do you make? Uh, light green geodes. Okay. Okay, so we can bring that out there. It's fairly straightforward. <laughs> carries on a little bit further we then have another of these splits and here we can now decide to oh, what do you even use to make um, chunks into the next step crystals leaching plants okay I need some of them can I build one of course not I need aluminium for this okay so I can't get any further than that at this point what I can do though is pull this off this way and right there's going to be six of these one from each refining system and then we need to sort them all into all the different products we can get so at the moment this is going down as far as chunks so I've only got the f I've got the four from each and there's quite a lot of overlap so we can start doing things like this how's this going to work so what we want to do is feed them all into a sorting system that will eventually spit the relevant minerals out in the right place. So if I make this one do iron ore, I suspect this isn't going to be big enough because there's more metal types in this. Um, what's next? Nickel. So the idea of this is that any of any particular type of ore, if it comes in on any of these ways in, of which I'm going to have six, then it'll get, if it's iron, it'll get swept up and come off here. If it's copper, it'll swept up and come off here, silicon, and so on. So it should allow me to produce the um, the relevant ores in the right places. Whether it's actually going to work as I expect, intend it to uh, remains to be seen. I think the theory is good, but I need to make it a bit bigger because I've not included cobalt or tin or lead or silver or gold. Oh. All right, where's the construction vehicle? I've run out of splitters. There it is. And I could... The alternative, of course, is to feed them all onto one belt and have that split them all up as they come out. But that doesn't feel... I mean, that doesn't, feels less proof against large quantities of resources being produced. And I might be... I might. This might be overkill. But I feel like it's a, um, a worthwhile design. That's what I've got up to. Wow. So if I go through, and I, this is only going as far as chunks, I haven't even got onto crystals and purified yet, but from my six different inputs, I'm going to get 11 different outputs. That's quite a lot. Right, well, the iron and copper can just be pulled straight up here and fed into these systems up here. Just get them out of the way. That's easy. relatively easy. It's a bit of a long belt but never mind 
The rest of them, I'm going to then attempt to convert into the appropriate types of minerals. <laughs> um, uh, metals, even. Or similar in some cases. So let's see. What, what, what am I using elsewhere? So, okay, silicon is the next one. Silicon I actually use as an ore, I think, over here. It gets, yeah, the silicon ore gets fed into the these machines and turned into crystals. So I'll probably do, oh, I suppose I could I could turn it into ingots and just get ingots running everywhere. Or I could leave that as an ore. Oh, I don't know. Does anything else use silicon? Yes, I was, I was making glass out of it at one point, but I don't think I'm doing that anymore because that was just for the greenhouses. I am literally not using silicon for anything else, and I've got 75,000 of it there. Yeesh. So silicon probably could stay as an ore, at least for now. Zinc is the next one. No, sorry, nickel. Am I even using nickel? I don't know, because this is all icons. Sorting bobmonium, crushed bobmonium. No, it's tin, okay. I don't think I am using nickel. So I'll probably, I'll probably turn that into plates, I guess. And it can go into ingots. And then ingots can go into... Oh, ingots can be used for all kinds of things. But also into plates. I think I probably should make it into ingots. And then have systems on the bus that accept ingots and turn them into plates for where they're needed. Ugh. Okay, let's take everything up to ingots. Which means... Or... A war gets turned straight into ingots in a blast furnace. That's quite easy. Okay, so let's see. This one goes... Those two go off to the to be made straight into the metals. This one stays as is and goes and gets on a train. So I'm going to have another system of trains over here for collecting it from all these stations. That's manageable. Let's have. A, I'm going to fast forward past this bit because this is going to be me looking at how to make how to turn all the different ores into um, into appropriate metals. Okay, that quite. Okay, so you won't be surprised to learn that I've discovered it's not quite as easy as I was hoping. Um, gold, as a starting, for as, as the one I've got to so far, it turns out requ also requires chlorine gas in order to turn it into gold ingots. So that's going to be something else to worry about. But I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'm going to sort of sketch stuff out and then worry about hooking up the complicated stuff later. So, good news is, silver is nice and simple. That is just feed it into the um, smelting machine and out the other side comes silver ingots. Hopefully lots of the others will be similarly straightforward. I'm hoping that gold is just, yeah, gold is just a bit unusual and this requires the, um, the chlorine gas to make it into the actual metal. And the rest of them will just be a case of melt it, stir it around a bit, pops out as ingots. Nice and straight, nice and simple. I mean, this is Angel Bob's, so the chances of it actually being that straightforward are very small indeed. Lead is also a difficult one, as we've already discovered. Okay. So, lead, as we're already aware, really, from way up above, takes in oxygen, puts out sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid, sulfuric wastewater, sulfur dioxide gas, which you can turn into sulfuric acid. Okay, tin is easy, good. Cobalt needs carbon as well. Oh, I don't have any carbon around here. Oh, I've got coal though, so I can make it from that. That's not so bad. Okay, zinc is different. Right, okay, zinc requires a lead catalyst and turns oxygen into sulfur dioxide as well. <laughs> okay. And is done in a chemical furnace rather than that. Aluminium is even more complicated. What's left? Nickel. Aluminium and nickel. So I want to make aluminium ingots. But in order to do so, I need to make alumina. Which is made from aluminium hydrox. Oh dear. <laughs> ah, this is where that sodium hydroxide I was building up goes. So I need sodium hydroxide and aluminium ore. And then... That's not too bad, actually. That's just feeding it through a succession of machines. 
that's fair, not it's not trivial but it's reasonably straightforward it doesn't require all kinds of weird inputs it's when you need a million different inputs that things start to get difficult and what was the final one I've forgotten nickel that needs carbon monoxide Oof. Um, okay let's forget about this one for now and work on the aluminium in fact where was the one that was going to require carbon here it was okay carbon is a solved problem how do I make carbon I know I've done it before where do I make carbon I'm sure it's for one of these electronic circuit type things oh, which are up here anyway here we go so you crush coal you burn it and then you chemical plant it into carbon oh, with steam okay <laughs> crush furnace chemical plant so I've got, I'm gonna have coal on this belt so I can put in a crusher and a furnace if I had one there's one and a chemical plant oh come on I must have chemical plants no I've already got rid of them all and I'm also going to need a boiler and a supply of water oh there's a, there's a lake not too far down that's not too bad well, I've got is that built I can't tell no that's the last one that's been actually built I found other things to play with for now, so it doesn't really matter that it's taking forever to do all of this. What I actually want to do is put that chemical plant an extra square across like that. Because that way, I can have it unload onto a belt here, like that, and then use a long-handled inserter there to get the carbon. Um, oh, I'm going to have to underground this in order to fuel that furnace and this boiler that I haven't put in yet. Hmm. I'm getting kind of close to the edge of my territory. Right, and that'll bring water all the way up here. I've forgotten what this one was. I remember it being difficult, and that's why I went, nope, I'll come back to that. It was one before aluminium, which is also going to be difficult. Zinc. Oh, this is one that required oxygen and a lead catalyst, and I went, Hmm, maybe later. <laughs> and I guess there's no reason why they actually have to be in order. As long as I feed the right thing and then in the right place. I can get rid of all of this. Actually, no, I want this bit. It's this I don't want. Okay, I'm pretty sure I want aluminium for stuff, so I'm going to do that one before I think about zinc, because zinc looks difficult. Okay, so we combine this with sodium hydroxide. Now that's being produced here. I'm not belting that all the way over. We're going to have to have a station for aluminium oxide, which is a bit of a faff, but never mind. We know how to do that. It's just one of these, but I won't put it in yet, actually. I'll put it in a bit, bit further along. Made in a powder mixer. For which I need clay bricks. There's a decent chance I've picked up some clay bricks, right? Somewhere in here. Because I know I'm making... And usually it seems like everything I'm making I end up with some of in the construction vehicle just because I keep picking them up by mistake and then dumping them in here. Yes, there we go, clay bricks. That's quite a small building. Okay, so we stick that in there. And if we're being honest, I'm probably going to bring the... Oh, hang on. I don't need to have the um, coal coming in here because that's not coal fired. This one, on the other hand, <laughs> is a blast furnace and therefore is coal fired. Carbon again. Okay, we'll bring that along from the last time I made carbon. Which is this belt. Is that going to... Can you burn carbon as a fuel? I'm not sure. Let's do that just in case. <laughs> so you're making... Oops, no you're not. You're making alumina. You're making alumin aluminium. Then we unload. And the belt going up there. Whew. I really need to get some more belts so I can just... Chuck, chuck stuff down without having to worry about it quite so much. Right, that's kind of complete, I think. Apart from zinc, because that's weird and requires more gases. Is this completely out of belts? Yes, it is. And I guess the bots are building stuff. <laughs> it's a bit slow. Okay, so what I need to do now is copy this across to all of the other ones and then link them all up in the right places and then think about balancing and that's going to be fun so I want all of that except I don't because I've got those 
pylons I don't need. That instead. Oh, and I need to go around and signal these um, stations as well. Okay, let's get me a logistics network set up. Uh, I'm not sure what I've done here, but it's not quite right. <laughs> yeah, that looks about right. Except I can't put that one in there. Setting up a logistics network is a bit of a faff, not going to lie. And the amount of time it takes the bots to flit around building everything, especially at this stage, oh, it's ridiculous. But it's worth it in the end. It makes the building so much easier. Let's get this out of the way and finish these belts off, at least down here. And then I can start thinking about stations. No, that's an outbelt. What's the betting I've got even any of these right? So this is the aluminium one. So that's correct. Zinc is the one we're not doing at the moment. Cobalt, good. Lead, silver, gold. I have! Got them all right. Amazing. What was wrong with nickel? Was nickel really hard as well? Carbon monoxide. Uh, I don't know where I get... Actually, hang on, I'll probably just get carbon monoxide from burning coal or something. Or with acid. Oh, come on. Tell me what I actually want to know. Now that'd be neat if I had chrome to play with. Then I could produce it as a byproduct of that one, but that wouldn't balance very well, I don't think. Carbon and water. Can't I just burn something? I mean, come on, carbon monoxide, how hard can it be to make? Apparently it requires purified water. But I'm go I'm going to require purified water for um, um, one of the stages anyway. For Oh yeah, for all the flotation anyway, so I'm going to need a lot of that. And that's going to have to come in from here somewhere, I think, because it's going to be needed in these pipes. Or I, mean, I suppose I could build it up. No, the stations are all going to go in up here. Okay, so there's pickup stations now are a thing to think about. Like that one. So the silicon one could be anywhere from about here to line up conveniently. Let's line my stations up. This is difficult. Right, okay, we'll put one first station there. Let's trim a little bit off the top of that. Now there's going to be a railway somewhere in the middle of this, but I can sort that out in a minute. Okay, this is my silicon out. Oh, look at that. It lined up almost perfectly. Okay, where does this copper go? Copper goes onto one of the... Why has this all stopped? There's no... Stirrets. Why is there no... Sapphirite? Bet it... Oh, uh, yeah. It's because I've broken that station. Because all of these stations are called Sapphirite Drop. Because they're copy-pasted. Oh... Uh, I mean, this actually is a sapphire drop, but it's um, not number two. This one hasn't been placed yet because the bots... Oh, I have got some. Okay, I'm out of um, logistics stations. I will just have to wait for the trains to... Um, no, sorry, the bots to actually bring those ones over. So there are a few more things that need to be sorted, like this belt. Oh, good grief. Typical, isn't it? <laughs> um, oops. Ugh, special cases. Right, and that can be an underneath here like that. Is this the one that... yes, this is the one that joins on there. There's a thousand things I don't have. What are they? Are any of these things things that uh, matter? 24... 100... stop moving! Right, so looking at this, of these things, I'm not sure if I'm making stack inserters. I'm definitely not making the combinators. Why is there a light on there? I haven't put the light down. Okay, let's just leave these for a little while to kind of get on with it and I can start plotting out stations again I suppose so the next one is going to be gold pickup oh, actually no let's not use that let's copy this one because this is good oh I'm gonna to need to come put signals down though I forgot about that so gold's gonna come out here why am I doing this in this mode right the next one silver is gonna come out here and that's not going to fill? Maybe it is actually going to fit. Apart from that um, pylon, which I don't really care about. Cool. Next one is going to be this one. This is lead. Oh no, stuff's getting blown up. Where is stuff getting blown Um. Oh, down there. Okay. Do I have any plasma turrets? No. Do you have any plasma turrets? Yes. Someday, maybe I'll get a full episode in without having to go off and shoot some biters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where even was that? I think it was down here. Yes, down there. Oh, they've got a a worm up here. How? 
They're not allowed, they're not supposed to advance like that, are they? Oh well. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for playing. Please don't build a base there again. <laughs> okay, that might have been slightly overkill. What is this stuff? Oh, gas wells. Okay. Having seen that there's also some quite close here, I'm going to put in another plasma turret over this way. Just, you know, for that bit of extra defence. That was quite interesting, though, actually. They didn't surge forward with um, biters and overwhelm the walls and the defences, as usually seems to be the case. This time, they actually crept up, built a base, well, a start of a base, and then um, created some worms to do the... Um, Art act as artillery, essentially. Why can't I pick that up? Oh, I'm full. <laughs> Fine. Here, have some of this crap. Why have I got so much coal? Also, why is there um, pickups on this side of the wall? There we go. All is well once again. Uh, and I probably don't need that many plasma turrets. Okay, maybe I do need a little bit more coal. Come on, little construction bots. Get back in the bus. Okay, back up north again. Where was I? Oh yes, I remember. I was thinking about stations. Oh, <laughs> I've actually run out of yellow belts now, so I can't even place. Can't place ghosts of them. Is there one somewhere that I can just steal that isn't really in use? Yes, there's some. Those are all the wrong way round. Oh, so close. Yet yeah, so far. Okay, so with those extra um, bot houses, what are they called? Roboports. Um, that's going to cover the entire station area. I haven't put in a stop for dropping off the salt for whichever one it is. This one, I think. But there's plenty. Well, there's kind of space. <laughs> there isn't, actually. Alright, I should have put that a bit further across. Um, let's get rid of that one. So I'm going to need a drop off station, which is going to be that one. Yes. So I need one of these in here. And then one of. Which way is it? <laughs> these. Let's leave it a little bit more space. There we go. That's a lot of building I've done in this episode. Oh, that's broken the um, sapphirite again. Styrotite. St sapphirite. Come on, then, little bot. Get back in. Okay, this is going reasonably well. Obviously, I need to come along and fix all these railways here. Because that's quite broken. And I need to rename this station here. And those two... No, that one, when it eventually gets placed. Wow. Okay, that's quite a lot of building going on. What are you? So that's the... Was that the... That's Crotinium. So this one's going to be Rubite. And then when the um, construction bots finally get round to placing this station here, I can call that one Bobmonium. And then we shouldn't get any more random breakages. At least for a little while. You know, hopefully. Maybe. I guess we'll see. And this is still useless because there's a... Well, there's a train picking up some sapphirite here. What are you doing? Uh, you're taking crotinium. You're taking styrotite, I think. I don't know where. Oh, you're just having issues with napathing. <laughs> okay. Oh, bloody trains. Oh, maybe it came from all the way over here. And yeah, there isn't a way to turn left off here. <laughs> okay, that's why it's going long way around. At the moment, I don't actually care. Okay, so I'm going to call this an episode here, I think, because I've been playing for, like, um, two hours. Yikes. I've made an enormous amount of plans, and I'm just sort of waiting for them to alter 
all to be built up now and that's going to take a while so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this running um, and then basically let, let all of this finish maybe go and do a little bit more tidying up I'll, I'll finish these belts off along here so make them all go into these filters properly um, and then in the next episode well then maybe we'll turn it on summon some ores and things over and see what happens <laughs> This is absolutely terrifying. I've no idea whether it's going to work or not. <laughs> I hope it is. And I hope this iron production is all going to come back up, back to normal. Yes, it looks like, well, so far. Okay, so, great. Um, I've built an enormous mess, and I shall spend, ne spend the next episode debugging it. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you'll join me for that, because it's bound to be exciting. Who doesn't enjoy a good debugging? I'll see you then.